The objectives of this lab were to take our data from lab one, which was two pieces of charged tape and the interactions between them. Find the excess charge on one of the pieces of tape, assuming uniform charge throughout the length of the charge tape. And write a code that simulates the interactions between these two tapes with these assumptions. The results were that the charge clear tape has a charge, a net charge of 2.39 times 10 to the negative 8 coulombs, and that the tape is deficient of 1.50 times 10 to the 11 electrons. The key concepts used in this lab uh, include Newton's, net, uh, Newton's second law um, of net force and the velocity update formula, as shown, the gravitational force formula, and then the electrical force formula as well. As you can see here, we have two variations where net or the electrical force is equal to the charge times the external uh, electrical force that a particle is feeling. And the new addition is the electrical, the equation for electrical field of a rod, assuming, and as stated previously, we're assuming that a piece of tape uh, is electrical field is being modeled by that of a uniformly charged rod. This is the experiment setup. It's the same from lab one. We're charging two pieces of U tape, and then we're gonna have one of them float above another one. Um, this is the same uh, observations from the first lab where the we determined that the U tape is positively charged because it repels when held to each other and it's attracted to our hand and tape or er, and pen. And there's a separation distance there as well. The experiment and data calculations are also the same from lab one. Um, this the tape length, tape width, tape surface area, number of atoms is all derived from that lab. Uh, the vertical distance between the two U tapes, 0 0.025 meters, and then the tape weight is 0 0.0018 newtons. This is the gravitational force that the top one feels. Here we're going to be estimating the uniform charge of the tapes. Um, so our process is we're going to set the gravitational force that the top tape feels equal to the electric force that the bottom tape exerts on that top tape. So as you see, the, our estimated charge, uh, the estimated charge of the tapes is equal to 2.14 times 10 to the negative 8 coulombs. Here we can look at our computational model that we developed. In the top left, we have the constants um, that we're going to be using. Uh, and top right is the part where we start coding the tapes in the electric field. So what we do is we're setting up the electrical field of a point charge. However, what we're doing is approximating the integral of the entire length of the charge tape by creating 30 points um, all together for each tape and calculating the... And at the bottom, you see that we're calculating the net electric force by adding up all these uh, forces together, the electrical force of each uh, point charge, each of the 30 point charges on each other. The arrows and on the right is the result of the computational model. The charge of the tape, based on a guess and check method, as well as our estimation, have, uh, came out to be 2.39 times 10 to the negative 8 coulombs. Uh, for deficient electrons, uh, we calculated that we were missing about 1.5 times 10 to the 11 electrons for it to be a neutral charge. We did this by dividing the net charge of the tape and dividing it by um, the charge of the proton electron. Proton, uh, the net force acting on the top U tape was zero, meaning that the electric force acting on it from the bottom U tape was equal to the force that the top U tape it felt due to gravity. This is the key principle that allowed us to solve this. Um, possible sources of error uh, include the same from lab one, wrong separation distance measurement, wrong length and width of tape measurement. The U-tape wasn't held in the correct spot, leading to an unreliable separation distance. And of course, rounding error. Question, you can see that the point charge model from lab one yields a smaller charge for the charged U-tapes than the line charge model from lab two. The Y question, we determined that this estimate that these estimates differ because lab one was we were using we were assuming that the all the charge was at the midpoint of u tape or in lab two we're modeling the electric field produced by the tape as a rod which is more realistic 
um, because the tape doesn't just have one spot of charge. 